Hi, my name is Elsie. I used to be one of the greatest musicians of all time. But before I continue, please like and subscribe. If you do, you'll excel at your hardest subject. Growing up in a small town in Nebraska without siblings was super boring and lonely. I didn't like playing with toys by myself, so my parents would send me outside no matter how much I complain. There's nothing to do outside. You could ride your bike. But they wouldn't let me go anywhere since I was only eight, so I would ride in circles around the driveway. School wasn't much better. I'd fall asleep in class and all the kids were boring too, except for my best friend Gina. You want to help me with my science project? Sure. We made a volcano that blew up at the science fair and a robot that went insane and tried to kick the teacher. The glitches may have been my fault, but Gina was always positive. It's okay. We all make mistakes. It's how we get better. Even Gina's life was more fun than mine. At least her parents took her on fun vacations. In high school, I realized that my life was lame because I wasn't special. I was an ordinary girl with ordinary parents and ordinary grades, and I just blended into the background, unlike a mean witch named Ashley. Look at her, she's so amazing. Wow, she's beautiful and talented. Ashley always got the leads in the school plays. She was head cheerleader, the student body president, and my worst enemy. It all started when I accidentally spilled some grape juice outside her dressing room on the night of the school play, and Ashley slipped and sprained her ankle. It was an accident, I swear. No one believed me because I was Ashley's understudy and ended up taking her place even though I wasn't very good. From then on, Ashley made my life miserable. She barred my entry into all the clubs and convinced the cheerleading coach not to let me try out too. How was I supposed to find a talent that made me stand out? Then one day in 10th grade, I was watching videos on my computer when I came across a girl playing the violin and I was mesmerized. The video had a gazillion likes. She had sponsorships and a dozen fan pages and she traveled all over the world playing to sold out auditoriums. I knew right then that I wanted to be just like her. I begged mom to sign me up for violin lessons, but they must have given me a broken violin because when I tried it, nothing but these awful screeches would come out of the stupid thing. Screech, squeak, screech, squeak. But my newfound love of music could not be ignored or abandoned. I just needed to find the right instrument. Next, I tried a guitar. Then I quit because the strings hurt my fingers. Singing seemed fun and easy, so I sang all the time in the shower, at the breakfast table, on road trips, during my parents' important phone calls, late at night, until they finally screamed, no more singing. They should have said something sooner. It hurt my throat more than it hurt their ears. Finally, the piano, and the teacher was my own grandmother. She could play music better than the violin girl and even taught me some easy songs. I was so excited, I invited Gina over to hear me play. That's really cool, you're so talented. Did I become a great musician right then? I wish. Is that the only song you know? Can't you play something else? Somehow, months passed and I could only play the same lame pieces. I hated practicing. It was tough and frustrating and it took forever. Slowly, I kinda gave up on my dream of becoming some musical genius. It just seemed too far out of my reach. But then something happened in 11th grade that changed my life forever. I don't remember much after my parents dropped me off at the fair. One minute I was walking past the petting zoo and sending Gina a text. Then suddenly I heard a loud shriek. Eeyaw! Then an angry donkey kicked me in the head and sent me flying into the side of a circus tent. I woke up in the hospital. My ears were ringing. Strange sounds and colors were going through my head. It's like I was seeing music? The doctor said I was fine and released me from the hospital, but on the way back home, I begged my parents to stop at grandma's house. Oh dear, what happened? I ran to grandma's piano, sat down, and started to play. And I was amazing! I could play any piece of music with perfect ease. I could even make up new music on the fly. It was all so clear and effortless. My goodness, where has she been practicing? Why, she sounds even better than me on my best day. Grandma entered me into a local piano competition and I blew everyone's mind. I won first prize. People ran up to me to get my autograph and I was even on the news. Ashley was so jealous. An agent came to my house and asked my parents if he could represent me. And soon I was playing gigs in so many cities. I was so busy, I missed Gina's birthday. So sorry, my schedule's been packed. 
I'm a superstar, you know. Oops, that's my agent. I'll call you back later, okay? Many successful concerts later, I was ready for a break. Zach, the most popular boy in school that I'd been crushing on since the sixth grade, invited everyone in class to his pool party. And I was so there. And I asked Gina if she wanted to tag along. We were supposed to go to the science museum today, remember? The science museum is boring. Can't we go another day? But today's the last day to see the electron microscope lab. I convinced Gina to skip the lame science exhibit and join me. Sitting on deck chairs, I shared my adventure with all the popular kids. My life definitely wasn't boring anymore, but Gina didn't seem impressed. In fact, her bad attitude was messing up the vibe. Ugh, we should have gone to the science museum. I'd rather watch paint dry than see Ashley and her friends prance around in bathing suits. It's a pool party. You're supposed to wear a bathing suit. There's no one even in the pool. This is such a stupid waste of time. Gina, that's rude. Why are you trying to spoil things for me? I can't believe you're being so selfish. I'm selfish? First, you forget my birthday, and then you make me miss the exhibit for this ridiculous party so you can impress all these kids that you don't even know. You've changed, and I don't like it. I haven't changed. You're just jealous. It's okay. Everyone can't be as awesome as I am. Well, you can be awesome by yourself. I'm leaving. I didn't like falling out with Gina, but it seemed like she just couldn't be happy for me. I was a shining star. I was living my best life. Maybe I just needed new friends to match. Then, Zach was suddenly standing right next to me. Hey, aren't you that girl who's so good at piano that she's already on tour? Hmm, something like that. <laughs> That's so cool. And you're playing in the talent show next week, right? Um, yeah. I hadn't heard about it, but, but it sounded like kitty stuff compared to what I'd been doing. Sweet. I can't wait to hear you play. See you around, Elsie. Zach walked away, and all the girls couldn't stop drooling over his perfectly sculpted muscles. I got up off my towel and dove into the pool, but it must have been the shallow end because the next thing I knew, I woke up back on my deck chair looking into Zach's handsome face. She's awake. Elsie, are you okay? Ow, my head. I, I think I hit my head. On the bottom, yeah. You should have a doctor check. I'll be fine, but I wasn't fine. After I passed out face first into my soup at the dinner table that night, my parents took me to see the doctor. He said I had a concussion and had to stay home for a week. I agreed, but only for one week. There was no way I was going to miss that talent show if Zach was expecting me to be there. I was backstage when the day finally arrived, awaiting my turn to perform. I should have been excited, but something was wrong. Something felt different inside my head. I couldn't see the music anymore. My heart pounded as I walked on stage, feeling dizzy with panic. I sat down at the piano, but it didn't have that comfortable, familiar feel. Yeah, Elsie. The auditorium fell silent. By the time I touched the keys, my hands were shaking. I started to play, and I was horrible. Every note was off key, and the melody was all wrong. Zach and his parents covered their ears, a baby started crying, and a few dogs ran up to the windows and howled. Then everyone laughed. I jumped up and ran out, crying. It was over. Whatever gifts the mule had given me disappeared when I'd struck my head on the bottom of the pool. It was so unfair. I had everything I'd wanted, only to have it taken away at the worst possible time. Gina called me a few times and sent text messages to see if I was okay, but I didn't answer. I was so ashamed. I had no idea how to explain my story, and I had no desire to show my face at school. That winter, Grandma sold her house and everything she owned when she moved into a nursing home. But the one thing she insisted on keeping in the family was her old piano. When it was delivered to our house, I hated looking at it. It just reminded me of everything I'd lost. One day, I was sitting on the porch when Gina came up to me. Are you okay? No, my life is over. I'll never play piano again. And no one will ever like me. And I'll live a boring life forever. And I was a jerk to my best friend. Well, you were a real jerk to me, but the rest of the stuff just isn't true. There's no reason you can't play piano again. Maybe you just need to practice. Over the next few days, I couldn't get Gina's words out of my head. Maybe you just need to practice. I remembered that Grandma had told me the same thing. So I pulled out my old music books and sat at the piano and gave it a try. And it turns out, practicing isn't so bad. In fact, it wasn't long before I realized it becomes easier as you go. Plus, with Grandma teaching me over video chat, I actually understood what I was doing and why. 
I continued taking lessons from grandma through the rest of high school. Gina and I started hanging out again. I even saved up my allowance to get us tickets to travel to the electron microscope lab that was two states away. Gina was right all along. My life wasn't over, it was just different. Now, you might be wondering, whatever happened to Zach? At first, I thought he was avoiding me after the talent show disaster, but then come to find out, he'd left town, and no one really knew why. I eventually stopped asking about Zach. I was too busy with school and piano for boys anyway. By the 12th grade, I was finally ready to play piano in front of an audience. You should enter the talent show. I don't know. Come on, you can do it. I think you could even win. Gina kept insisting, so I decided to sign up. The line was huge. Ashley and the other cheerleaders were in front of me. If we do the same routine from regionals, we'll blow the roof off this place. And that trophy is ours. I edged my way through the group, wrote my name at the bottom of the list, and the word piano beside it. Since when do you have talent, Elsie? Since I started practicing music? <laughs> then why do I seem to remember your spectacular failure last year? Didn't that bump on the head, like, turn you stupid or whatever? No, I, uh, look at the dummy. She can't even speak. Get ready to lose, loser. You don't stand a chance against us. I stayed up all night practicing. On the night of the competition, I waited backstage for my turn. The moment Ashley and the cheerleaders took the stage, they were incredible. Even though I would play Beethoven, my little piano piece didn't stand a chance. And right before my performance, the power went out. Great. I took a deep breath and stepped on stage. Cell phone flashlights and displays blinked on throughout the audience like a brilliant star field. I sat at the piano. There was just enough light to see the keys. I played the famous Beethoven piece to oohs and ahs and a standing ovation that led to winning the talent competition. I'd done it, not from a freak accident, but for real. Oh, and there was even a nice bonus. I ran into Zach in the lobby afterward. You were amazing. Thanks, but where have you been all this time? China, exchange student program. I wanted to keep in touch, but everything happened so fast and it was my only chance. I couldn't even look you up on social media because the government restrictions kept me totally off grid. <laughs> really glad to be back though. Me too. Can I ask you something? Sure. Do you give lessons? Only if you practice. Shall we say Wednesday after school? It's a date. Hey guys, I'm Kaylee from LA. Please like and subscribe. Ever since I was a little girl, I've always loved to sing. My grandma was a professional singer. She sang around the world with the most prestigious orchestras and operas. I miss her and her voice so much. When I got to 10th grade, I became the singer of the family. I went to the most prestigious performing arts school on the West Coast. My favorite class was music, of course, and my favorite club so far was show choir. We had been the best in the state for 14 years, with the trophies to prove it. My best friend Addison is also in show choir with me. He and I met in kindergarten and have been inseparable ever since. He's the funniest guy I've ever known. He's also gotten pretty cute over the years too. Or at least, that's what all the girls in school think. But I just don't see him that way. Hard to see someone that way when they used to sneak over from next door and put frogs in your bed. Yuck. One day, our show choir teacher, Miss Conrad, had big news for us. We've been asked to compete at this year's National Show Choir Competition. All right! Woo! Yeah! Yeah! But to ensure we get top scores, the soloists will have to be chosen very carefully. Miss Conrad told us that we were gonna have to audition for the big solo right in front of each other in one week. My nemesis, Heidi, started bragging in front of the whole group. We all know who's gonna get it. Me, of course. Everyone knows I have the stage presence of a star. I don't know. I think Kaylee might give you a run for your money. She's got star power and the voice to match. The other's eyes widened. Were they about to fight? Just then, the bell rang. As everyone left the class, I swatted Addison on the arm. Don't start fights with Heidi. She's my biggest competition. That's exactly why you have to stand up for yourself in front of her. I just don't want anyone to think I think I'm better than her. Well then, I guess that's why I'm here. To remind them for you. <sighs> what would I do without you? Good thing we'll never have to find out. I was so nervous, even though I'd sung in front of our choir before, but the pressure was on. The whole week leading up to auditions, I practiced. In the shower, in the car, between classes, 
I really wanted to beat out Heidi for the big solo at the end of the show. Finally, audition day arrived. I woke up, put on my cutest outfit, curled my hair, and took extra time with my makeup. After all, if I'm gonna be a big star one day, I might as well start dressing like it now. When I stepped out of my house to walk to school with Addison, his cheeks turned super red. What's wrong? Nothing. You, uh, just look different is all. Your hair is... Oh no, does it look bad? Maybe I should have worn it up. I'll just go change. No, no, leave it. You look good. Great. When I arrived in class, Heidi was sitting in the front row looking totally perfect. What was I thinking? With her shiny hair, big eyes, and as much as I hated to admit it, her beautiful voice, why would anyone ever look twice at me? But I just tried to remember what my grandma would always say. It's not about who sings the loudest or looks the prettiest. As long as your song comes from your heart, people can't help but listen. So I took a deep breath and sat down next to Heidi, right in the front row. She gave me a once-over and rolled her eyes. Who cared what she thought? I knew I looked great. Miss Conrad sat down at the piano and called Heidi up first. After she finished singing, I applauded politely along with everyone else. Then, it was my turn. I stood confidently and turned to face everyone. Addison gave me a thumbs up from the back row. Such a good friend. Miss Conrad played the opening notes for my song when suddenly the door to the classroom burst open behind me. I turned to look and standing in the doorway was the most handsome boy I'd ever seen. Tall with long brown hair that fell perfectly into his eyes. He looked just like a fairy tale prince. My jaw dropped. He handed a note to Miss Conrad. Class, this is our newest addition, Patrick. He waved to everyone then put his hand on my shoulder, looked deep into my eyes and said, I'm so sorry I interrupted your audition. Nakam did. Then he took my seat right in the front row. I gulped. Oh, now I was nervous again. I shook off my nerves, took a deep breath, and nodded to Miss Conrad. As she played, I could feel the music filling me up all the way to the top. I opened my mouth to sing and let my song come from my heart. When I finished, the whole class burst into applause. I felt like I was walking on air. Patrick got up to sing something last minute. He was so good. The next day, Miss Conrad put up the list and I had gotten the solo. And she'd even added a duet in the middle of the show for Patrick to sing with me. Looks like it's you and me, Kaylee. I'm so honored to be singing with someone as talented as you. I felt my cheeks turn red and he grinned. You're so cute when you blush like that. Be careful or I might just fall in love. He walked away with a wink at me. I couldn't believe he'd just said that, and neither could Heidi, who'd been listening around the corner. Don't get too comfy with that solo. Once Miss Conrad figures out that you'll cave at the first sign of pressure, I'll be ready to step in. Eavesdrop much? Jealousy isn't your color, Heidi. The next day, we started rehearsing for nationals. Everyone was working so hard, and Patrick and I sounded great together. But when it came to our dance, it was like I'd suddenly grown a second left foot. No, Kaylee, no. Once more from the top. <sighs> Miss Conrad, I'm happy to come up front and show Kaylee how it's done. Not necessary, but thank you, Heidi. Just here for the team. After I knocked Patrick over by mistake for the third time, Miss Conrad called it a day. Kaylee, please go home and practice, practice, practice. Ugh, I could have <laughs> wiped that smug look off of Heidi's face. Everyone went to start packing up their bags, and I started to head backstage to get my bag when Patrick came up to me. Hey, gorgeous. Want to stay and practice a little with me? Then it'll be perfect by tomorrow. Oh, I wouldn't want to impose. Your toes must be all bruised. That's okay. I really don't mind. And I wouldn't mind spending a little quality time with my co-star. Well, if you insist. Just then, Addison came up to us. Hey, Kaylee. Ready to go? That's okay. I should really practice a little longer. I can practice with you. I could use a few run-throughs myself. Oh, um, well, Patrick already offered to stay behind and practice with me here. He did, did he? How are you gonna get home? I can drive her. Oh, do you live in our neighborhood? No, but... I mean, if it's not really convenient for you... I'm not spending time with Kaylee because it's convenient. Neither am I. I'm spending time with her because she's cool. My face turned bright red. Did he really mean that? Addison, I'm gonna stay here too just for a bit to practice. I'll see you later, okay? Fine, if you insist. I'll, uh, see you when you get home. He turned on his heel and walked out. Patrick turned to me with a grin on his face and held out his hand. Shall we? 
We practiced more and I was finally getting good. Patrick swung me out for our final spin, then pulled me in close and dipped me. That's when I noticed his face was just so close, his ice blue eyes staring deep into mine. Was he gonna kiss me? Just then, all the lights in the theater went out. Patrick dropped me in shock and I shrieked. All of a sudden, the lights came back on and Miss Conrad stepped back on stage. Oh, hey kids, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize you were still here. Ugh, I couldn't believe she'd interrupted our moment. Still, we waved goodbye to her and headed out. A little while later, when Patrick dropped me off, he got out of his car to open my door. Such a gentleman. It was nice hanging out tonight. I'll see you tomorrow, superstar. Then he wrapped his arms around me and gave me a big hug. Is this what heaven smelled like? Then I headed up the front walk to my door. So do you like him or something? I whipped around and saw Addison waiting on our front porch swing. I don't know, maybe? He's so cute and really talented. Um, okay, cool, I guess. Do you still want to practice? That's okay, I think I got it now. Okay then, well, um, then I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Here, I got you a milkshake. Hey, thanks. He started crossing the yard towards his house. Is it? Cookies and cream, your favorite. Thanks. I'll see you tomorrow. You know it. Then it was finally time for nationals. As we arrived at the concert hall, I was overwhelmed by all the other groups here and overheard one girl say to another, she was a little flat at the end. I couldn't believe it. What if I lost us the whole competition? All night and throughout all our warm-ups the next day, it was all I could think about. If I messed up again, I'd be letting everyone down, including myself. And there were several famous music industry people judging the competition. What if I ended my career as a singer before it even started? And then, it was almost time to go up. I tried to calm down, but I was shaking like a leaf. Miss Conrad, Kaylee doesn't look so good. Miss Conrad came over. She looked pretty nervous herself. Kaylee, you look terrible. Are you going to be able to perform? Of course, I... Because if you're sick, I can always put Heidi on. I'm ready to go, Miss Conrad. Just then, I spotted Patrick warming up down the hall. I just need a minute. I raced down the hall towards him. He was stretching, shaking out his hands, jumping up and down. Patrick? His expression was so strange. Was he nervous too? I'm so nervous. Do you think we could practice? Kaylee, I'm kind of busy. What if we... I really just need some space here, Kaylee. Yesterday, you said we were a team. That doesn't feel like a team to me. I can't do this right now. Could you leave me alone? Fighting back tears, I ran down the hall and found a corner backstage. I couldn't let anyone see me so upset, especially not Miss Conrad or Heidi. What was I gonna do? Suddenly, Addison stepped out of the shadows. He looked so handsome in his costume. Kaylee, are you okay? I threw my arms around him. He caught me and squeezed tight. I'm so nervous. I overheard one of the other teens say I sounded bad. Miss Conrad is ready to replace me with Heidi. Patrick isn't any help, and there's amazing industry people out there, and... Ugh. You sounded amazing in rehearsal. Those other teens were just jealous. Forget about Patrick and Heidi. Remember why you love to sing. What was it your grandma always said? Sing from your heart? Exactly. Just do that. I took a few deep breaths, and Addison was right. Will you just run the last part of the number with me? Of course. And there, in our little corner of the theater, we stepped, we twirled, we kicked in time together. Addison took my hand, spun me around, and dipped me low. I felt his arm slip. He was dropping me. But right before I was sure I'd hit the ground, he caught me with a twinkle in his eye. I swatted his arm. You tricked me. I'd never drop you. And even if I did, I'll always be here to catch you. Thank you, Addison. Then he smiled at me so genuinely, and my heart fell into my stomach. What was that? Places, please, students, places. Kaylee, are you ready? Yes, Miss Conrad. As we all rushed to take our spots to start our number, Addison shot me a wink. Knock him dead, superstar. You too. As soon as the lights came up on stage, I felt a little thrill of excitement. We danced, we sang, we twirled. Everyone had brought their A-game. When it came time for my duet with Patrick, we totally nailed it. But any spark that had been there was gone. As the opening chords of my solo began, the light shined down on me and I opened my mouth and the music poured from my heart. I knew my grandma was right there with me. I hit my final note and held it out forever as everyone finished their steps behind me. As we struck our final pose, the crowd erupted into applause. A standing ovation. I beamed. We totally nailed it. 
That night, after all the points had been tallied, all the teams gathered on stage behind the judges. Addison reached for my hand and I squeezed back. Thanks for the pep talk. I could have never done it without you. Of course you could have. I'm just here to remind you. You're always there for me. He leaned in close and I felt a flutter in my stomach as he whispered in my ear. And I always will be, if you let me. I turned to look directly in his eyes. Kaylee, I, I have to tell you. Just then, the announcer started announcing the winners. Second place, runner up. Our whole team clasped hands and took a deep breath together. And the grand prize for this year's national show choir competition goes to... As they said our name, the crowd roared. It was so loud I could hardly think. Confetti rained down on us as Miss Conrad stepped forward to accept our trophy. I threw my arms around Addison and he picked me up, swinging me in a circle. We did it! We did it! As we packed up our things in the dressing room and said goodbye to the new friends we'd made at the competition, one of the judges knocked on our dressing room door. He was an exec for a record label back in LA. I was so impressed with you. Your vocals were so clear and you've got some real presence up there. Give me a call if you think you'd be interested in recording a single. He handed me his card and I shook his hand, totally awestruck. Maybe dreams really do come true. I felt so relieved. Not only had I not let everyone down, but I'd made myself proud. On the bus, Addison dropped down in the seat beside me, running a hand through his hair. When he saw me watching him, he grinned and the butterflies were back. I'm totally beat, aren't you? Definitely. I, uh, got you something. Oh yeah? I pulled out a bag of gummy worms. Your favorite. <laughs> You're the best, Kay. He ripped open the bag and dug in. Hey, Addison, what was it you were gonna tell me earlier? Um, I, uh, I don't know. I don't remember. Well, I have something I want to tell you. I... Yeah? I like you. Really? Really. I like you too. I have for a while now. Really? Really. He took my hand and I know my cheeks turned pink. I got something for you too. Ooh, okay. I love presents. And then he put his hand on my cheek, leaned in close, and kissed me. It was the perfect end to a perfect day.